Let's look at our public key encryption method called learning with errors. Uh, it's generally classified as uh, lattice cryptography. So the problem that we have is that quantum computers will be able to crack most of our public key methods. So this includes RSA, elliptic curve, L gamma, uh, and, and so on. So it's likely that we'll need to migrate away from these methods which use discrete logarithms and other related methods and move towards new types of cryptography. The four basic classifications for the quantum robust methods are lattice-based. So I'll have a look at that where we can use uh, uh, the LWE uh, method, code-based cryptography, and that's using error correcting codes and similar things that we would see from the datacoms era, multivariate polynomial cryptography, and hash-based signatures. So in this presentation we'll look at lattice-based cryptography methods using uh, LWE. Okay, so with the LWE method, what we do is we generate a public key and a private key. We will encrypt with the public key and then decrypt with the private key. So initially we have a secret value and we'll just keep it simple. We have a single secret value called S. This is defined as the private key. And we'll now generate the public key. So the public key is made up of two vectors, or we'll call them lists of numbers, A and B. So first we'll look at A. So A is a list of random numbers up to a value equal to a prime number. So the prime number in this case is 97. We define that as Q. And we're going to pick 20 numbers at random. So what we see is uh, N integers, 20. And these are integers which are modulo Q. And Q is 97. So we'll see values up to 97. In real life, these values, this, the value of Q will be much, much larger than that, a very large number indeed. But to keep it simple, we'll just define them up to 97, and that will be our Q, or our prime number. Next, we define a, a vector, or a, a list of error values. So we'll generate these randomly, and we'll make them very small, uh, numbers, in this case up to the value of 4. So this is the first part of our private, our public key is A. We then define B and each element of B is equal to A multiplied by S plus E or EI and mod Q. We always use the mod Q in cryptography because it allows the operations to carry through. Okay, so this is our value of A that we had. We'll pick a secret value of 5, Q is 97, and here is our error list. We'll now calculate each of the values of B. So B1 is equal to A1 times S plus E1. So let's see if we can do that. So I've got my trusty Python here. So we'll print 80 times 5 plus 3 and mod 97. So the value is 15. For the next one we have 86 times 5 plus 3 mod 97 and we get 45. Just to prove it, we'll do one more. The next element is 19. And we have 5. And the next error is 4. More 97. And it's 2. OK, so we go through these values. And this will give us B. So this is a difficult problem to solve. It creates a lattice. And these errors are difficult to find out 
uh, what the secret value s is. So our public key then becomes a and b. So we can publicize this and anyone who wants to send us encrypted uh, values will select values from a and b. Okay, so our private key is now 5 and that's our public key. So what we then do is we take samples. So the samples might be this pair and this pair and this one and this one and this one. Okay, so we took four samples from it. What we then do is we take those samples and we summate them up to create the value of u. We then take the b samples that relate to our sample places, a and b, and do the same. But this time we take, take away q, which is our prime number, divided by 2 times m. This gives us the value of u and v, where m is a single bit value. So with this encryption, we take one bit at a time and then we can encrypt that into a cipher bit. So if we had 32 bits, we could take each bit to make them into 32 cipher bits. So that's our message here, which is a 0 or a 1. So we end up with the U and the V. Now we receive U and V, so how do we decrypt? We decrypt by taking V and then taking away S, which we know, that's our private key, times the U value we received, and again we take mod Q. If we find out that the decrypted value is less than Q upon 2, our prime number divided by 2, the message was a 0. If it was greater than Q upon 2, the message was a 1. OK, so a sample run, here we have a message of 0, take some sample random values, we then calculate the B value given the secret key and the errors. This is the public key here and here. We can discard the errors, we don't need them, them anymore. We would keep the, pub, the private key and we would publicize the public key A and B. We would also publicize that we've used a prime number of 97. So in this case we're going to sample, so we sample at various places and then we get a U value, and a V value and then from there we work at the result and we get that the message is a zero. So let's see this working for real. Okay, so let's take a secret value of that and we'll take a value of zero and we'll take a secret value of 8888. Okay, so you can see in this case it's generated an A value for us. It's then generated the B based on the A, the errors, these are random errors, and also the secret key. So here's the values here. So we never get a value greater than the prime number, which is 97, from our B value or our A. We'll then sample, and we'll sample at the 11th position, the 9th position, the 12th, 16th, and 8th. So the pairs that we end up with are 39 and 55. So 39 and 55 and 10 and 31. So we've got 10 and 31 and so on. So we'll summate the A value and we'll summate the B value. And because it's a zero, we won't actually add on our bit value. So the value of uh, U that we get is 51. And the value of V we get is 20. When we take the result of uh, V minus S times U mod Q, we get 13. 13 is less than Q, the prime number, of 97. So the value is a 0. Let's try it with a 1. And now we see we end up with a 1. And we can try this again and again. We'll try with a value of 88 instead for a secret. We can just keep going, and every single time it should give us the right value. Okay, keep going. I'll make our secret really low as an 8 to see if it still works. 
and it's working perfectly. We see the values here are always above. Uh, coupon 2 will go for a 0 and then we'll keep trying and trying and trying and 18, 14, 18, 8 and so on. We can see the message is 0. Okay, so this is the way that we create quantum robust uh, methods. Okay, so the code, if you're interested, is, is here. So here is the value of uh, S. There's the message there, just, a, 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 just an example with a single bit. And this is me generating the, uh, the sample range with a number of values, in this case 20, between 0 and 100. Obviously we make it up to 97. After this, we then generate our B array based on uh, our, our E value. The E uh, array is just a random integer from 1 to 4. And then we do the mod Q at the end uh, to do our calculation. After that, we'll take uh, some ram random samples. Uh, across the whole of the, the vector and then from there we can work out the u value and the v value and then at the end we add on this value here and then we determine the result and as I said if it's less than q upon 2 then it's a 1 if it's greater than q upon 2 it's a 1 if it isn't then it's a 0 okay so this has been a, a basic introduction to learning with errors.